Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Strofen at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwendage, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with and that's exactly what we're going to be doing today because uh, as you can see we're going back into, into Syndicate and we're going to be taking a look at um, a deck from one of our Team Elderblood teammates, Trusky. He uh, vanquished the uh, Open last week and uh, yeah, we used some uh, very spicy decks, among which also, of course, Stockpile, another favorite of mine. But one of his decks was an off-the-books Syndicate deck, and that one is the one that we're going to be checking out. And I gave it the aptly name, the Book of Trusky. So uh, let's head into the deck builder and take a look at the cards. So this is the list. So um, it's an of the books um, syndicate deck. So of the books giving you uh, one coin discount on all of your tribute abilities. And you have four charges now since the buff where you get two coins for every charge. So eight coins and the passive ability where every single tribute costs a coin less, which is really, really powerful these days. Um, other than that, yeah, we're focusing on a lot of tribute abilities just because of that. Um, meaning that we have a lot of benefit from our leader ability. Um, mainstay of course is also the Salamandra Mage where we get another two coins on every tribute ability and of course the King of Beggars is something that you cannot omit especially if you're going into the tribute archetype because um, you get uh, your tributes back as long as you're under 12 coins in total. Once you hit that 12 coin count you actually summon the King of Beggars out of your deck and he gives you an extra spender as himself, where he boosts himself by one for every fee ability. Um, we'll be going through each and every single card one by one as usual, um, but if you're not interested in that, as always, you can also use the timeline down below to skip to the example matches. Uh, in the description of this video, you'll also find the link to the Playground website, where this deck also resides, where you can export it and import it into your game um, to play around with it yourself. It's a very tactical deck, um, as you'll see in a minute, but very powerful nonetheless. Let's head into each and every single card. Because even the cards that you might think you know have gotten a little buff. So Eternal Fire Disciple is one of those. Still three power for four provisions. Still gives you two coins uh, when you play him. But his fee ability has been reduced from two to one coin. Where he spawns a Fire Sworn Salad in this row, which is a two power um, token. And you can do this every single turn, at least, well, just once. Um, the fact that the fee has gone down to one means that your coins actually have a 100% markup, making this card as efficient as Spender, if not, I mean, you still have the cooldown, but it is as efficient as a Spender as Gallard Blindheim, which was up until now the only one who could double up on your coins. Aside from, of course, Philippa, but Philippa doesn't give you any extra coins on top of her ability. Then we have the Mutants Maker. This is a Devotion deck, so we gain three coins regardless of what you're doing with him. And he has a four power body on top of it. So uh, simple as that. Then another card that has gotten a significant buff, the Eternal Fire Inquisitor. Starts at four power, but on the ploy you destroy a Fire Sworn token and you boost yourself by four. So at least a six point card on the ploy for four provisions, already not bad. But after two turns, you spawn a base copy of the destroy token on this row. So if you destroy a one power token, uh, this card is seven on the ploy and then an extra two at the end of your next turn. So nine points in total, which is quite a lot and it's a hefty body on the board as well to uh, let your opponent deny that uh, that extra two points that those extra two points that are coming across uh, you could even if you have a um, I think it's a flaming rose um, soldier you could get that down to one power which would give you another extra point once the uh, the token is uh, spawned again because that's going to be three power instead so very powerful um, card just in the four provision range. Then we have one tax collector where you uh, put him on the range row and at the end of every one of your turn you gain an extra coin. Simple as that as well. Simple engine. And now we have two renegade mages. Uh, remember our tributes cost one less. So this card's tribute is free. Four power and on deploy you just damage a unit by three because your tribute is free so you'll always be able to do this. Seven points uh, for four. So very good for provision card once again. And then one more arena ghoul, basically the same principle, seven power for four provisions and on deploy you uh, destroy yourself at the end of your turn, but if you pay one point as a tribute, you cancel the deploy ability. 
Again, our tributes uh, are reduced by one, so this tribute ability is also free. Just remember to actually use it, because otherwise this card will nuke itself. Then we're heading into the five provision range. We're going into another Fire Swan card that got a bit of a buff. So the Cleric of the Flaming Rose, four power for five provisions, gives you three coins on deploy. And for uh, one coin, you spawn a Fire Swan Zealot. Again, 100% markup on the coin that you spent, just because the fact that the tribute has been reduced by your ability. For one coin, you can also transform a Fire Sworn Zealot into a Flaming Rose Footman, possibly also giving you two points if that Fire Sworn Zealot was damaged for a single coin. Very, very good card, especially in a Fire Sworn deck or in a deck that features quite a lot of uh, Fire Sworn cards, like this one. Then Double Salamandra Mage, we talked about him briefly already, but five power for five provisions, probably the strongest five provision card in this deck. For four coins, but in our case three coins, you can pay the tribute where you damage three adjacent enemy units by two, which also means he gets a 100% markup on his coin expenditure if you actually um, hit three targets that can take that to damage. But even without that, uh, you also get coins back. Normally you gain one coin back, so that means that he has a 200% uh, markup on his coin expenditure. But on Adrenaline 5, uh, so if you have five cards or less left in your hand, you gain two coins back instead. Making this, since you only technically spent one coin on the tribute, um, a 500% markup on the coins that you spent, but only of course once. So very, very efficient card and you can spend those remaining coins on something else. And this passive also keeps working, so from that point onwards, whenever you pay a tribute ability, you will gain extra coins, which is really, really good. And then we also have the Borsodi Brother. So first, Horse Borsodi on deploy, you gain three coins, he starts at four power, and if his brother is in the graveyard, you gain six coins instead, which is a lot. He also has a fee ability, where for one coin you give an allied unit one turn of vitality, so just simple one to one. Um, then we have Gallic Blindheim in the middle there, but I'll just skip him for a second and go to his brother, because his brother has a similar ability. Um, Ewald Borsodi starts at 5 power, damages an enemy unit by 2, but if his brother is in the graveyard already, you damage an enemy unit by 4 instead, and his fee ability allows you to provide bleeding to enemy units. So two extra spenders in this deck, um, which is definitely very handy. And then we need to go back to Gallic Blindheim, um, the uh, original card that, what, that had 100% markup on his coin expenditure. Uh, five power, two, two coins that you get, and on every coin that you spend on him, you poison an allied unit and boost it by two. Poison, aside from if you're facing a uh, syndicate that has a lot of poison, or Nilfgaard would not be that much of a problem. Um, and as long as you're not at Adrenaline 5, he does not have a cooldown. So if you spend your first few turns creating a bit of a swarm with the Fire Sworn, uh, the Eternal Fire Disciples and those Fire Sworn Zealots, uh, you can poison all of them in one go and get a big point total uh, just from this card alone. Uh, which is very, very powerful as a starting play. Now next up, we're immediately moving up to the 9 provision range, Morelse, uh, 4 power for 9 provisions, and on deploy you damage an enemy unit by 4, but if you pay 5 coins, in our case, on the tribute, you destroy that unit instead, so you're a tall removal card in this deck. Now we have Savola, another very important card in this deck, because Savola is 9 times out of 10 going to be the card that you use to get King of Packers out of your deck, uh, 6 power, 2 profit, and on tribute 8 in our case, you spawn Savolos Frightener, giving you 50% markup on your coins. And the Savolos Frightener, of course, is a 12 power, 6 armor, um, very big token, um, which is doomed. So if it's destroyed, it's not going to be in your graveyard. Not that that really matters, I think, for Syndicate, but uh, regardless, very, very powerful card. Then a Vivaldi Bank, basically our only tutor, 3 coins and you look at the top card from your deck plus an additional card for every coin you possess. So if you have 5 coins at the time this card triggers, you see the 6 top cards of your deck and then you can play whatever card you want, but if it's not the top card, you need to pay the amount of coins equal to the distance to the top card. So if you play your 2nd card, you pay uh, 1 coin, if you play your 5th card, you pay 4 coins and so on and so forth. Very, very handy tutor, uh, especially towards the end of the game where you have less cards left in your deck. Now we have Horson Jr., a uh, still very good damage dealer, especially in this swarm archetype heavy meta these days. 
uh, 4 power, starts at 4 power, has insanity, so technically you could use his fee ability by damaging himself, which we most likely are not going to do. But on deploy, damage a boosted enemy by 6, and you gain a coin for every point of excess damage dealt. Um, since we're devotion, you can also damage any enemy unit, so it doesn't need to be a boosted enemy unit. And his fee ability allows you to destroy an enemy unit with 3 power or less for every 3 coins that you spend on him. Destroy means that you bypass armor. Um, and shields and everything like that, um, which can be handy in certain situations. And then Tin Boy, again, swarm heavy meta these days, so Tin Boy is back in full strength, 4 power and on deploy, you damage all units on an enemy row by 2, so basically lacerate, but if you pay, uh, in our case, 7 coins, you also damage the uh, enemy units on the other row by 2, so basically damaging everything uh, on your opponent's side of the board by two. So very, very cool against uh, Swarm heavy decks like Firesworn, Elves, um, usually Nilfgaard as well, because Nilfgaard does actually spawn a lot of units on their side of the board, um, especially in Assimilate. Now, of course, King of Bangers, I've explained this card before, but while in the deck, whenever you pay a tribute, you get the coins back um, up until 12. So when that counter reaches zero, you summon him from the deck into a random allied row, uh, and at which point, which point he becomes a spender, because he starts at one power, but he will boost himself by one for every coin that you spend. So in case you have excess coins, you can use them on him. Next up, we have the evolution card for Syndicate Jacques. Uh, we're always gonna go either with Jacques the Eldersburg or Jacques Grandmaster, because we are Devotion. He gives you four coins and on tribute three in our case, you spawn two flaming rose footmen on his row. He also has a fee ability where he boosts himself by one, so same as the king of beggars. Uh, and if you manage to get him all the way on the, uh, the top uh, in his final form, you also get a passive ability where you gain a single coin whenever you play a fire sworn card, which we do have. So could be interesting to play Jacques first in the final round, unless you don't have a lot of other spenders left, because uh, this is, of course, one of your limited spender cards. And then last but not least, the Professor, once again, six power for 12 provisions, and on the pull you put a bounty on an enemy unit and damage it by four, so if it dies, you gain coins back equal to the amount of the base power of that unit. Uh, he also has a tribute ability where you can ignore a target's armor, which could come in handy sometimes, uh, especially against Skellige and stuff like that. And the tribute is only two coins in our case, so very handy indeed. And then as always, our stratagem is the Tiger's Eye, where we gain five coins. There's no better stratagem for Syndicate, especially with uh, the newer cards that give you 100% markup on your coins. And then of the books, I just talked about uh, that plenty as well, I think. So tributes cost one coin less, and you gain uh, eight coins in total if you want to, whenever you want, per two. So uh, there we go, Book of Trusky. Let's see if we can find any interesting opponents to uh, test this deck out against. And immediately we get our first opponent, which is Nilfgaard Assimilate. That's going to be interesting. Assimilate always struggles a little bit against Syndicate because they need to try and balance the same amount of coins as you do without having the actual uh, abilities to do so. Um, always Mulligan King of Beggars. You get both Borsodi Brothers, so that is really nice. I don't really need... I'll, I'll keep the Renegade Mage but get rid of the Arena Ghoul. And then we get Gallard Blindheim, which would be very handy in this first round. Yeah, I think I have a good starting hand. Uh, there's about six cards that I definitely want to play, uh, seven cards even that I can play, so that is absolutely fine in this first round. Um, let's always start with the Eternal Fire Disciple. He can just continuously spawn those Fire Sworn Zealots, and we can then use that in, with the uh, Inquisitor to destroy that. And there we get Tourney Jousted immediately, which is fine. I'll use the Cleric of the Flaming Rose next then, because the uh, tribute is only one coin, so you can definitely do that. And he gives us three coins as well, so uh, there we go. Don't really need to spend the coins just yet, as you'll see in a minute. Because I can use Gallard um, to just spend those coins. Now we get the Tenet Turncoat. I'll use the Eternal Fire Inquisitor first. So that brings us up to seven, and then the next card is going to bring us... So that's seven, that's six, so yeah, I need to play the uh, Mutants Maker first. And then I'll just use the coins to uh, transform them into Flaming Rose Footman. There we go. And then next up we can poison them all. Jan Calvates, and then of course the Turncoat is going to damage our Cleric of the Flaming Rose. And then we use Gallard. 
to just poison all of them. So one, uh, two, since he doesn't have a cooldown at the moment. Be very careful not to double tap here, because if you do double tap, um, you actually, uh, yeah, chill that unit. And that's something you definitely don't want to have, because then you lose all your coins. <laughs> Imperial Diplomacy. Going strong there. So they need to spend a coin on that card, and they can't, so it's just going to be a single damage hit. I could get rid of a token now, but I don't really want to. Uh, so what I'm going to do instead is use the Renegade Mage myself, I think. Uh, no, Ewald Borsodi first. So I'm going to hit the Tana Turncoat and then start adding some bleeding because I have plenty of coins here. Um, get the Tiger's Eye and then poison Ewald Borsodi as well. There we go. Yeah, I kind of forgot. I can't uh, destroy a token now. Wouldn't be very efficient. And there we go. We get the pass. And Ewald Borsodi is in our graveyard as well. So that's going to be um, very, very handy. And we also end up with four coins. Now, we are going to have to bleed our opponent here. Uh, if we don't, we might be in a bit of trouble. So try to be as aggressive as possible. We do get a few nice golds to do that with. But the Inquisitor is useless at the moment. So as long as we're not getting any other cards to... Create tokens with, although we could with Jack. I'll keep one of them. Alternatively, we're at 8 right now. Yeah, I'm, I'll just use the Mutants Maker and just end the round there. Because we can't actually use a single card. So we keep those two coins in the next round. Immediately Joachim, that's probably... Okay, so they knew that that was going to be the case. Fair enough. Um, I don't need to push any further. That's Joachim gone immediately. Are they going to use Coup de Gras now to get the other? Because I'm assuming there's going to be another Blight Maker now up top. And I don't have an artifact, so Angoulême would have been indeed useless. And that was a good way to check that. Uh, as you can see, we're only at 11 with uh, the King of Baggers just yet. It's good that we draw him so we don't have him in hand afterwards. Again, the Inquisitor... It's risky, although it's not that risky. Uh, it's probably more risky to have the Renegade Mage here. Because I have a single Salamandra Mage. Okay, we got the uh, Tax Collector. And the Blight Maker first. I would have waited with that. Because you could have gotten two extra damage out of that. But there we go. Getting ourselves the Tax Collector first. Giving us a few coins. Duchess Informant giving them a Tax Collector of their own. I could kill that. Um, I do need to be careful. I think I'll go with Jacques first. Because uh, Jacques has the passive. I have enough other options to yeah, get uh, the King of Baggers out. There we go. And then I'm going to start hitting this a little bit. Getting him up to 9. And then I can kill um, the Tax Collector with uh, the Professor. Because I don't want to give our opponent too many coins. Too many coins gives them options when they uh, start using the um, their assimilate ability. So Professor out of the way. Pay tribute and kill that tax collector. Giving us uh, 9 coins. That was just enough, right? Yeah, I was at 4. So I'm going to put this to 12. Because um, next up... I think next up is going to be no. Next up is going to have to be the Eternal Fire Inquisitor. I'll spend another coin there. Because I'm at 6. Um, so I'm going to have to be careful with my expenditure here. Because I can use Horson on something big. Um, so next up, the Eternal Fire uh, Inquisitor. That gives us... Um, one coin because it's a an, an, uh, fire sworn unit. So I'm going to actually spend two more coins on Jacques. He's becoming rather big. So if he's going to get uh, Yennefer invocated here, that's going to hurt. But it is what it is. I'm going to be Professor on top of our tax collector. But that gives us a good moment to actually kill... Um, yeah, let's use Horson now. Uh, Horson can kill the Mage Torture. 
in the back. You could spend more coins on that. Uh, it's one to one for now, so might as well do so. There we go. And now we get our, yeah, our Flaming Rose Footman back. Coup de Grasse on Professor again, killing, uh, that's gonna kill... Ah, oh, I would kill the Professor, no? Ah, oh, you could kill Horson, I suppose. Probably should do Horse Borsodi first. Yeah, I'm gonna do Horse Borsodi first. Um, just because he's a very good spender at this moment, so I'm just gonna... It's just enough. There we go. Uh, I could do that again, but I don't really need to. There we go. Look, okay, muzzle. Horse Porsodi there, and then Savola. Savola was the better option there. You will not stand in the way of my I do need to be careful. I don't have a good spender left, um, so I do need... Yeah, I'm going to get the King of Beggars eventually. So, Salamandra Mage next. Pay the tribute and hit. I'll hit over here just in case I want to kill something really big. Um, I'm not going to spend more coins on uh, Jacques here. I have just enough to get another spender out of the deck. And our opponent's leader ability has come out. So that's Pratens. That's going to probably try and copy. That's the Salamandra Mage, but you can't use it because you don't have the coins. Okay, 20 points ahead right now. But I still have Tin Boy. And I also have the Sala, uh, Savola. What are the chances that they have two ways of getting rid of a spender? Because uh, I need... Yeah, the next tribute I pay will actually trigger the spender. Right now, I also already have enough for uh, to actually use Tin Boy effectively. So what I will want to do is get another spender out. Because even if I get... Oh boy... Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna use Salamandra Mage. Um, damn it, couldn't really click him enough there. That was too bad. That's the end of the invocation on uh, Jacques. Um, now, uh, I spend on Savola. I'm gonna get all of those coins back, so... There we go. Spend on Savola. Um, and I only need one coin left to use Tin Boy. So one, two, three, four. And end it there. And then if they can play their top card, they won't be able to... And the only thing I lose if, I, if they kill King of Baggers is a spender, but yeah. That's not a problem. There we go. And we can do... Oh! Oh, oh, I almost forgot to use the leader ability first. I mean, I would have won regardless, but there we go. Boom! Yeah, Timboy is really powerful against uh, Nilfgaard as well, because Nilfgaard usually ends up with a lot of extra units on the board. So there we go, first round one. Ooh, that's going to be a mirror. Eternal Fire Disciple, definitely Mutants Maker could go. But I usually tend to get rid of the Arena Ghoul. Um, just thinking about the line here. So Eternal Fire Disciple, uh, Mutants Maker, no, Fire Inquisitor, Mutants Maker, Gallard, which brings us to six. Then Salamandra Mage, and that may be one of the tribute cards. That seems to be okay. So our opponent does start this time, which gives them a huge advantage with the Tiger's Eye, especially uh, in this case. It's going to be good to see a mirror, though. Opponent is already deciding something, apparently. Maybe to spend the tribute or not. And it's Maxi, so just to put their deck in the right order. Seems a bit early to play a card like that, but um, Eternal Fire Disciple first. Step that and start getting that cycle going. And we get an Eternal Fire Disciple of our own, well, not our own, <laughs> of our opponent here. Um, let's tap it again and then use the Eternal Fire Inquisitor to destroy one. Which is good, because because of Maxi, we actually got the upper hand uh, points-wise in this first round. So we kind of swapped it around a little bit. The only problem is that our opponent actually has a better... If they also have Gallard, the Tiger's Eye just gives you the benefit. 
because the five extra coins, it's just ten extra points that you play on the board. And then we get a Witch Hunter. Okay, so it's not the exact same deck. We, we already knew that because of Maxi. Um, but it is not the exact same deck. I'm gonna make it harder for them. I'm gonna already play Gallard. So Gallard doesn't really matter when you play him, um, but I can use that to boost the um, Eternal Fire Disciple there. And then tap this again, because I'm gonna get three extra coins in a minute, and the Eternal Fire Disciple is the limiting factor here. You get the Witch Hunter Executioner, which is gonna have to spend five coins now instead of three, so that was a good a good decision to start adding some more defense on that, so that loses them two coins technically. And they didn't tap the Eternal Fire Disciple on their side, so that was, I think, a bit of a misplay, but three more coins. We're still at Adrenaline, uh, well, below Adrenaline 5, so I'm just going to do this now. And we're eight points ahead, although we do have, of course, five less coins. And now we get Kurt putting the bounty on Gellert, I'm assuming, yeah. Taking care of Gellert there. Okay. Now, I can definitely play the Salamandra Mage now. Um, I think that's going to be the better option. I need to spend two charges on that, however. Um, if I use Nova the Vivaldi Bank, I could get something else out. I'm going to risk it. We get the Eternal Fire Disciple, which is uh, good. Very good. There we go. Because next up we can then play the Salamandria Mage. Um, we can get Bounty again on the Eternal Fire Disciple. I don't really care about that. It's weird to see off the books with a deck that clearly doesn't have a lot of... Well, off the books abilities. Um, so I'm just counting here. I'm going to get two coins back. I spent three big, but I get those three back as well. So I definitely need to tap this just to be sure. I would have gotten the max... But there we go. That gives us... Uh, oh, I miscalculated there. Well, doesn't really matter, but there we go. Five coins going into the next round. And we are at... Yeah, we're down a card. And we didn't lose any leader charges either. So that is fine. We do end up at seven. I'm gonna just circle through these bronze cards first. Okay, we got that. We're gonna get a single coin in carryover, which I think should be enough. We still have plenty of our gold cards left, um, so let's just uh, hold off on that. We don't want to give out the advantage here. Cleric of the Flaming Rose, which is, yeah, a good card to play there. You get two coins in carryover now, so just a single little bit of advantage for them. Alright, I think Horson would be a good card to still get. We get Renegade Mage, Cleric of the Flaming Rose, and Ewald Borsodi. Alright. Um, Renegade Mage, since we... Yeah, okay, we got Horson. And uh, maybe just... I'm gonna check. We have a really good hand here. Yeah, I don't want to risk uh, pulling uh, King of Beggars. And we have a, a token for Eternal Fire Disciple. And could even go with uh, Jacques if you wanted to. So, finish redrawing there. And our opponent goes first. What is King of Baggers at? Nine. Oh, so they don't run Devotion. Interesting. I'm just gonna do the exact same thing. I think. Yeah, I don't have the Salamandra Mage now. So I'm gonna have to make two, but with uh, Jacques Grandmaster I actually get a few extra coins every single time. Um, I'm gonna boost him. Um, to ten. Just because that means that he survives Horson. Because I can use Horson now myself to kill their shock. But that's a better option to actually kill. Because that just gives you so much benefit here. I'm just checking if there's anything else I need to do. I could do Ewald first. Ewald on the Salamandra Mage. And then next turn... Horson on Jacques if he doesn't get any extra coins now. But even then I could do the same the same action. So that's a full coin pouch. Well, what are you doing? Oh, Philippa taking Jacques for themselves. Interesting. 
Yeah, okay. Okay, that's fine. Um, let's use uh, Horson to kill their one shark in the back. And then I'm going to use one charge to actually kill the Salamandra Mage as well. And that's going to be it for now. So if you've been counting, we're at six with the King of Beggars. And that is a hit on Horson. I'm going to get a Cleric of the Flaming Rose here just because he gives me... Yeah, a bit of extra coins. I don't need to... Do I need to bleed, actually? Um, I'm going to bleed the Professor. It's going to give me a lot of coins with my Professor in a minute. So double bleed on that Professor as long as he doesn't get buffed by anything else. We get... Okay, that's really good because I want Horst in the graveyard. <laughs> All right. I want Horst in the graveyard there, so that is also really good. I can definitely kill Jacques with Morielse. And now I can do Eternal Fire Inquisitor on the Flaming Rose Footman, which gives me an extra point on the one that I spawn as well. So that is fine, unless they use Morielse to kill off the uh, Inquisitor here, but I don't think so, yeah. There we go. Maybe we get the Executioner instead. But now I get a lot of coins. Oh yeah, please bleed that one token. I would love for you to bleed that token, but they're not going to. Okay. So now I can use my professor uh, to kill theirs. And that's going to give me six coins. Which is going to be just enough for Savola in a minute. Um, but I'm going to use one coin. Yeah, one coin on the fire swan zealot here just to give that a little bit more protection. Because I want to be careful with my spenders as well. Um, they have enough spenders at the moment. I do not. Uh, King of Bagus is at 5. So if I use Morielse, he also disappears. Uh, we get Bled there. So Ewald gives me another spender. But I need to spend those 3 remaining coins first. Because otherwise I could kill Jacques. I know I could kill Jacques. Uh, that gives me... But that gives me my King of Bagus. And it's going to be my final... Although, I wouldn't really mind. So let's use Morielse to kill Jacques now. Um, I'm going to tribute and kill Jacques now. That leaves uh, their spender out of the field. And I do not need to spend coins. No, I do not. I do not. No. I'm just calculating here, but I do not need to spend my coins. So Horsen's Freak Show is going to kill... Uh, the King of Bacchus, but that's using a lot of uh, a lot of coins for not that many hits that you take away. Because I was not going to use that as a spending there. Um, I can now use Savola and Tin Boy. I'm probably only going to use as a uh, as a single hit there. So let's pay the tribute for Savola. And I'm just going to use Tin Boy just to wipe away one row this time. Because uh, I have... Although I could... So Morielse is going to kill... Yep, that. And it's going to be King of Beggars there. But again, I don't really need to worry about that. Because um, I can spend about... I'm going to be able to spend eight. I think it's eight, right? Eight coins on... I could, yeah, I'll do it like that. So I'll use Horse Borsodi now. Um, and spread out the coins up to... Uh, I need one left, so I'm going to do five bits of vitality. So one, two, three, four, and five. There we go. And then the last play is going to be Tin Boy. And Tin Boy is... It's not going to be super efficient, but... It will depend, actually, on whether they take out... They don't take out... Huh. Now I need to calculate. Although, I need 13 points. If I hit everything by 2... That is... 6, 8 on the front, 7 on the back. So that is already 13 points, so I don't even need to think about this. Yeah. And there we go, just enough coins to finish this up. Yeah. Whew, just needed to count my coins there, whether that was going to work out or not. 
There we go, won the mirror. And then for our final match of the day, we face Stockpile. Ooh, very cool. Problem with Stockpile is that I'll probably not be able to do much against it. <laughs> okay, so as always, Arena Ghoul can go out. I don't have a Salamander Mage, although Renegade Mage might actually be interesting. Kill something of three. Let's get rid of a Mutant's Maker and... Uh, oh, Tax Collector is good, but Renegade Mage might actually be better in this case. I guess we'll see. We'll keep, kick this out and then go with Eternal Fire Disciple as always. There we go. You put him down first because he's a stronger engine than the Tax Collector, so next up will be Tax Collector. Um, and then we got a Boiling Oil immediately, wow. That was very aggressive all of a sudden. Tax Collector on the board. More engines that they would like to destroy, I'm presuming. And then we have one more card before we can play Gallert, just really quickly. And then yeah, since I don't have the other option, I usually like to play Ewald first and then Horst, because Horst benefit is a lot bigger. Um, but this time we're gonna have to do it the other way around. So Caraballista and a Siege Master, but that does not get Zeal. We get double Siege Master. Interesting. Okay. Uh, then I'm gonna use the um, the Cleric first. And then just armor up on those two guys. It's not the most efficient play, but it's uh, good enough, I think. Uh, they're gonna be able to kill either the Tax Collector or the Cleric with that. Because uh, they can use the, the Siege Masters to yeah reduce the cooldown and then use something else, I'm presuming. To reduce that Carabalista's yield. Yeah, Bombardment, for example. And that mostly hit the, um, the Flaming Rose Footman, which is interesting. Because I can use the Eternal Fire Inquisitor to his full effect now. Because <laughs> I can just eat that. That gives me 7 points on deploy and another 3, so that's 10. I think that's the most you can do with the Eternal Fire Inquisitor. Now, I don't have a good spender left, but yeah, I think the better option is going to be Gallard here to start actually spending uh, a little bit of coins. Um, our tax collector is gold. And there we get our next uh, Flaming Rose Footman. Now we got Fico's muzzle on that thing. Okay. Ooh. Uh, well, Hosbor Sodi is going to be the most obvious choice here, so him and then uh, apply vitality to every card here and I'm just gonna do that again because I need to get rid of those coins and get the tiger's eye because my next card is also a coin <laughs> a coin creator as we put it so that's gonna hit horse poor Sodi and then we get winch giving them another two hits but that's not enough to take the round and we get 8 points on the next turn. I'm gonna leave it as is, I think. I don't want to risk too much here, yeah. Let's just end it there. 5 points ahead and we get 2 coins in carryover, which is gonna stay at 2 coins because I'm gonna use the Mutants Maker in the, the boss round. So they're forced to play a card now. Uh, probably the most efficient way would be another Warfare card. But they did play Bombardment, Winch and... Uh, boiling oil already? Yeah, so that siege tower is gonna be two, and then you need to spend charges, yeah. That was not ideal, was it? Probably better than what the, the alternative was. Okay, so I'm assuming this is gonna be a pass round. You wouldn't be pushing with um, Northern Realms, because if I have a few damage dealers, that would just work out really badly. I'm gonna get rid of the Renegade Mage. Ooh, Salamander Mage is really good, though. Eternal Fire Disciple is good as well, but this is the round where I need to really start swapping a few cards. I'll keep it. It's just so good. I really don't want to... Oh boy. They're going for it. Fine. Fine. That might be problematic. Didn't expect them to push this aggressively already. I mean, I can do the same thing. I'll start slow. I need to start slow regardless. Um, King of Baggers is at 11, so I only did the Cleric of the Flaming Rose. So the one coin tribute. So the idea would be to not give them yeah, a lot of... That's actually good, because now I have three coins in carryover. Uh, that doesn't... Yeah, that's absolutely fine. That was a weird flex. 
because you need those ballistas if you play stockpile. I've streamed yesterday and it just proves that you need those ballistas when you play stockpile. Okay, two Salamandra mages, always really powerful and king of baggers, so that's an easy mulligan. Eternal Fire Inquisitor could come in handy again. So I'm gonna get rid of the Renegade Mage. And we get Morielse. Okay. We're gonna do the, the cocky play again. So Jacques first. And pay the tribute. Um, and then put him up a little bit, I guess. I need at least... So next up is gonna be six, so I need to play something, probably the Eternal Fire Inquisitor then. I'm gonna put him up to nine. That should be insurmountable for now. Now we get Radovit. Ooh, we get Radovit, and I can't, I could kill him. Killing Radovit now would get rid of a single stockpile charge and six points. Depending on what our opponent plays, stockpile might be more or less problematic. So I'm gonna leave it as is, I think. I could kill, I definitely could kill him, but I could profess him even. Although if we get um, just a single correct marine would for fuck that up, so. Um, Eternal Fire Inquisitor then... Uh, can also be the front row actually. I can do that and then I'll just put him up to 10. It's always a hard balancing act, because Radovid is a really tough card to estimate what the value would be. You get two points on the stockpile charge, but also of course a reduction in cooldown of whatever you play. And there's the first Ballista going up in the back. Do I use Morielsa on that? I think Voltest Sprite is still the better card. All of my remaining cards are tribute cards. Um... King of Baggers is at 8, which is actually pretty good, which means I can use both Salamandria Mages without losing coins. Well, I am going to lose value here, but um, put them back up to... I'm going to get 5 coins on the next one, so I'm just going to put them up to 14. I don't know if there's a Koyati in that deck, I hope not. There is Siege, at the very least. I'm gonna use the Professor. That Reinforced Trebuchet needs to go. Even though it doesn't, it's not a cooldown card. I'll use the Salamandra Mage again, then. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I didn't have enough coins. Damn it. Yeah, okay. Lost track of my coin count there. So if the next one is... Ooh, War Chariot. Uh, I didn't use the Tribute now, so King of Baggers is at 5, so whatever I'm going to use now is going to hurt a little bit. Okay, I'm going to use Morielsa. Um, Morielsa on that Ballista. Uh, let's put Morielsa here as well. I could actually spend one more coin here and then use the Tribute on Morielsa hit that and I get the King of Baggers in return. So I'm gonna put... Yeah, up to five. Let's put him up to six. I still have about six coins that I can get from killing Radovit. And there we have full test Sprite. Fuck, I forgot about that. Okay. But Volta Sprite is actually not, um, yeah, not crude at the moment. Interesting. So I still get four coins back on every tribute that I spend. So I'm actually getting more coins if I use the tribute on the professor. Um, so I need to spend two coins and then use the professor. Pay the tribute and kill the um, the Battering Ram or the Reinforced Trebuchet. I think the Battering Ram. It's gonna give me four and then another four. Or I could go for six now, I need to kill the engine. So that's four and another four, and I'll just keep those pretty equal now. Uh, that's enough. Yeah, that's enough. So next up, Savola. And that kills Jacques. 
So now it's Paramount that the King of Baggers survives. Um, although I think it's not necessary even. So I'll put Savola down over here. Pay the tribute. Um, and I only need seven coins if I want to pay the tribute, but I don't even want to pay the tribute. No, I'm just going to hit the front row. So that means that I can just use this and spend everything on the King of Beggars. Because that was what I was going to do anyway. Because I can guarantee that the Salamandra Mages will stay alive. Um, yeah. I think we have this. Yeah, there we go. There they go. The Salamandra Mages. And I can get a lot out of my Lacerate there. Opponent is deciding. You should have played reinforcements way before this, but they're going for winch instead. So that's another nine points, which is really good. And then another stockpile, another bit of bleeding on. Yeah, but that's only going to take one more time. So that's really not worth it. So and that actually stacked up the nice the the row really nicely for me to just hit this. There we go. Even against Stockpile, the Swarm hit actually works, and that's it, gonna be it. I don't think there's anything they can do now. Yeah, Bombardment is not gonna be enough. It was plenty, but still 10, 10 points ahead, so there we go. Another win for us. So, I'm not gonna deny that this deck is rather complicated to use. You need to calculate a, a lot of things at the same time, but if you keep track of your coin count, how many coins you're going to get back from tribute abilities depending on whether you have Solomon or Mages, the fact that you have King of Baggers still in your deck, and you can keep track of all of that in your mind, uh, you can always root a very effective way towards victory. Especially that last match was a good example where I just calculated, okay, so I'm going to get from Zavola, I'm going to get a certain amount back, so I was going to get four coins back. With two extra charges in my uh, leader ability still, I would still have eight coins, which was just enough to uh, technically also use Tin Boy. I didn't eventually do it, but it would have been an option still. Um, and then, of course, you need to balance that with the amount of spenders that you still have. Can you? Is it better to spend your coins now on the spender like I did before with the King of Baggers, or save them for another tribute ability? Tin Boy would have done practically nothing in the back anymore, so spending seven coins to just do two damage wouldn't have been worth it. Um, so that's why those coins went to the King of Baggers. Just trying to explain a little bit how my thought process in this deck is. Um, and again, uh, you can check this deck out for yourself because the link to this deck is in the description of this video. So let me know what you think of it. Again, this was created by Trusky of Team Elderblood and, uh, well, got them a, a solid win in the Open uh, of uh, last weekend as well. So there we go, the Book of Trusky deck. And that's it for this episode. Um, yeah, a very competitive deck to my mind. It's not something um, that uh, is easy to play, but again, very powerful uh, against most of the meta decks uh, if you get the hang of this deck. So again, um, created by Trusky of Team Elderblood, so big shout out to him. Um, and of course, congratulations with his win in the Open as well. Um, I'd like to use this video to just say that. Um, so with that said, Thank you all enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Gwentech and I'd like to see you all in the next one because uh, next up um, we might actually be going into something a little bit um, more juicy than uh, what we've seen so far. Um, but I guess we'll see that in the next one. So thank you guys enormously for watching and I'd like to see you in the next episode of Gwentech. Goodbye and stay nutty.